Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. Now in these leadership training videos, I take a subject, a topic, and I spend a few minutes just unwrapping it for you to help you in your own journey with regard to leadership. Whether you're well advanced, you're at the initial stages, you're following, you want to discover and learn more about leadership and what it involves, you're in the right place. Because what I do is I help you understand those leadership traits the leadership skills, the leadership abilities, the leadership knowledge you need to have or become a more effective leader. Because that's what we want. I want you to be more effective, more successful and achieve way more. My name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience leading, training and developing teams, primarily across Europe, Middle East and Africa, but essentially in five major European markets where I've lived and worked. Please feel free to comment, like, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available and look back on the other video topics that I hope will incite some interest and engage you. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts and ideas. So what's the topic we're going to talk about today? Well, it's, it's really come from yourselves in a sense, because this is a question that I have frequently been asked by a few people, is what would I do differently? What would I do differently? It's fine me telling you about my own leadership journey, the leadership skills and abilities, the qualities, the traits that I've discovered and learned and put into practice in a very clear and authentic way. Well, the other aspect of the question would be, what would I change? So what would I do differently or what would I change? Now, inevitably, those questions are similar but different. We won't get into that right now, but okay, let me give you a bit of insight into my own leadership. So. What would I change or what would I do differently? Nothing. I would do nothing differently. Now, clearly that's an obvious answer that I could give you. And in general, to be perfectly honest, it is true. And why is it true? Because the journey that we make to get to where we are today was a necessary path to make. In other words, there is nothing linear about leadership. You do not go from A to B to C until you get to Z. There is no such thing. You'll go left, you'll go right, you'll go down, you'll go up. You'll go back before you go forward. That's why it's a journey and that's why it's exciting. Because in many ways, I could say I would change this, I would change that, I would have done this differently, done that differently. But would I be where I am today? Would I be considered the global thought leader that I am in my industry? Would I be considered the global thought leader in a broader context of leadership, growing and building and developing teams, being able to network, having one of the best networking abilities and relationships across the globe? certainly in my industry. And that's not me saying it, that's other people. I have an A-list of connections. Would I have got there if I hadn't made the path that I made, the mistakes that I made, places I went to that I shouldn't have, places I didn't go to that I should have, in terms of thought and action? I don't know. So for me, when I say there is nothing that I would change, it's true. I fundamentally believe that. However, because this is a leadership training video, I do want to share with you some things, because it made me think, some things that I could have or should have done better, and I'm gonna take you through what those are. I think one of the first things that I would have done earlier in my career, much earlier, although I found them later, but earlier would I, would I, should I have done that, was to find mentors and coaches. Now a mentor, if you remember, is somebody who's done it, who's achieved whatever it is. It's someone who you want to aspire to become. So you see him or her as your guiding light and you want to become in many ways like them because they are the reference of what you want to achieve. They are the person you want to become. And I would have had coaches earlier in my career, which is more about helping you understand which direction to go, how to do it, they may not be familiar with your industry, but they may not be familiar with what you're doing. And I've had coaches who are not, and I chose them deliberately because I didn't want somebody in the coaching environment within my field. 
I wanted to get an external perspective and I believe that helped me grow much faster as well. So people who I had to explain what I do in order for them to say, well, here is how I can support you through coaching. So don't get me wrong, having somebody in your industry, absolutely, but having somebody outside giving a different perspective is invaluable as well because that person listens in a very different way. So I would have found, although I got great mentors and great coaches throughout my career, but I would probably have found them earlier in my career. I would have attended definitely more workshops. Now I've attended a lot of workshops, both in the UK, in continental Europe, and in the US in particular. However, they haven't always necessarily all been around leadership. I'm an entrepreneur, I run my own business, but I've worked in corporate as well at very, very senior executive level. Would I be focusing just on leadership? Not necessarily, but perhaps I should have at an earlier stage, whereas I attended workshops of a more broad context. But I would probably, looking back, have attended more focused leadership workshops. That said, for those of you who are watching this today, 25, 30 years ago, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have access to online training and development, and human resources were not necessarily geared towards leadership training workshops. So I think at the time I would have had difficulty finding them, but that's something I would have done differently. I would have read more biographies and autobiographies. Now I read a lot, but I would have read probably more and probably more focused around a leadership context. But I've mentioned to you the likes of Mark McCormack, Lee Iacocca, um, obviously Bob Proctor, Jack Ma, a few more recent ones. There are many others that I've read up on and you probably wouldn't know or you wouldn't be familiar with unless you're more of my age. But the point is I would have, I would have read more autobiographies and just seen in the leadership context, what am I getting from those books? What am I getting from those, um, that lo those life stories of individuals? I would have asked more questions as well. We all have a, a tendency, I guess, to think we know it all, but we don't ask questions and we don't ask the right questions to help us in that process. And those questions could be asked either of, either of the mentors and coaches, or they could be, of course, in the workshops that you would be attending. And then for me, an important one would have been, and I did study some of this, but maybe not to the degree that I could have or should have. So maybe maybe within the workshop environment, I would have studied, so not as a degree, I wasn't looking, I'm not looking to get a degree or a diploma necessarily. In So when I talk about studying, I mean, it's about reading, it's understanding, it's about learning human behavior, or you could say human psychology, because I think that's so important in today's world um, in terms of what we do. Now, inevitably I could add in there more about culture and uh, experience, especially as I worked across five major European markets. I'm multilingual, so I'm able to speak different languages, but still I think studying human behavior would have certainly helped me in a much bigger way. I would have developed also an entrepreneurial mindset sooner. So I was in corporate for quite a long time, probably the first 20 years of my career, 15 years certainly. And um, I had always this entrepreneurial mindset, which means you think differently. You don't think in a corporate silo, strategic way alone. It's about working your ability to take risks, to look at opportunities, to take advantage of things, but just almost having your own business within a business. And I, I developed that. So I, most of the companies I've worked at, they've allowed me to perform very autonomously because that was something I insisted on. But I think I would have developed that sooner. But then again, okay, that's fine. That's all about me. But in a sense, maybe to bring it to something more concrete for yourselves to understand, I would have been more effective and I guess focused more on the hiring and firing in terms of efficiency. And I did a whole video on this as well, so you can check that out. But in terms of the approach, the speed, the consistency, the clarity about those I wanted to hire, and then those who I wanted to fire, I would have done so sooner often got pushed back or the HR department said, well, let's hold on, you know, we can't for this or that or the other reason. I'm not saying it's simple, but I'm saying this is somewhere where I could have and should have performed better, although I'm very happy with the success that I had. I'd be clear with, clearer with my boss. So clearer means expectations, strategy, what I can do and can't do, because there were things that took a lot longer to 
evolve, either going up or coming down from my boss. And I would have challenged the status quo, the status quo meaning you get told this is the way it is. Not from your team necessarily, but just the company. This is the way it is. Or even as an entrepreneur, this is the way you're supposed to behave or act or react in a certain way. I would have been more challenging. I'm much more now, but again, going back to my earlier years and working in corporate, I'd have been much more challenging. The other things very quickly, I would have grown leaders faster. So I did grow leaders, but I th- I would have or should have given them more energy, more input, more support in those times for them to become leaders. And many of them went on to become leaders outside the business and so not necessarily within the company where I was. I'd have focused more on succession planning. So given that my history was I've stayed with companies generally three to four years in the corporate world, I've been headhunted successfully and moved to other companies. So knowing that that was a bit of my profile, I should have or could have planned succession with obviously the the organization I was working for to carry on. Um, And I did do it in certain companies, so it was successful, but um, I would have done that with more knowledge and insight, but I didn't really know in my younger years what succession planning meant anyway. So it's not like you're handing over a business, but it's an area you need to look at. And finally, I would say I would have been less tolerant of poor performance. You see, as a leader, I've always been keen to help grow my team, to growing these leaders. And sometimes they weren't quite going to make it or they were too slow. So performance is not necessarily about the poor performers, but those who I had slated for success and improvement, but didn't have, didn't get to the level that I was expecting of them. So kind of disappointment. So I would have been less tolerant with poor performance as well. So those are just a few ideas I wanted to share with you. Like I said, basically I would change nothing because I've got to where I am as a result of going off piste, going down the wrong path, doing the wrong things at the wrong time. Not many of them, but enough for me to say I shouldn't have done that. But at the same time, I acknowledge, embrace and accept what I've done. But at the same time, in order to help you in your journey, I thought I'd just give some highlights as to what I could have done better uh, had the circumstances been different. You look at yours wherever you are in your journey and hopefully you'll find your own path to improve and accelerate that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, comment and share and of course subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available. And until the next time, I will say thank you and goodbye.